It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. What a job. With £200 each. You with me? A classic car. Buckle up. And a gold to scar Britain for antiques. Oh, sorry. Ha <laughs> ha. The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. There'll be worthy winners. Yes. And valiant losers. So, will it be the high road to glory <laughs> or the slow road to disaster? Have a good trip. <laughs> this is the Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. Well, here we are. It's the fifth and final leg of the road trip with silver expert Margie Cooper and military mad auctioneer <laughs> Paul Laidlaw. How are you, my friend? Perishing, Margie! Are you listening? Just forget your cold. Pull over and give me a big hug. <laughs> well, at least it's still warm in their hearts, even if it's cold in the car. Have you noticed anything about the car? Have you sold the other one <laughs> and managed to buy a cheaper one and this is augmenting your profits? It's going to be the next option. Yes, there's been a quick swap. It's still a Morris Minor 1000 convertible, but is from 1958 and with a 48 horsepower engine racing. Why say horsepower? I mean, it depends on how big they are. They're like ten little horses with short legs. You need more of them. So it's, come, it's, like, it's like a word come from the past? Yes. A bit like us. Horsepower. I said us, I meant you. That's not very gallant. <laughs> From her original £200, Margie begins today with £410.62. Paul won the last auction and now has £598.74. Hey, we've done well, have we? I mean, oh, seriously. Yeah. But well, you're still ahead, my dear. So, sorry, pardon? You're still ahead. Pardon? You're still ahead. Oh, it's fantastic. That. Could you text me that? <laughs> well, we've got, <laughs> well, we've got, uh, we've got another, another, another load of buying to do. Indeed, you have. Our Pez road trip kicked off in Hemswell Cliff in Lincolnshire. They've yomped around Yorkshire, mooched around the Midlands, and they'll be selling in Shrewsbury. Today, they're aiming for that auction in Shropshire, but they're kicking off the day in Wooton Warren in Warwickshire. This is our last day. Last days of buying. So while Margie drives on, Paul's first stop is to check out the wares in Sims Vintage. Oh, there's it, Phil. It is. Good to see you. Hi, Paul. I like the look of this place. Positive and upbeat as ever, Mr. Laidlaw. Let's get to work, shall we? I'm not usually one to pick up vintage toys, but this one has my attention. And that, surely you recognise, is a little miniature pistol. Yeah. Would you reckon 1950s cowboys and Indians? Nah. Victorian. Proper antique. Nah. Why don't we go Tudor? <laughs> Tudor. One of the oldest things I've picked up this road trip. And it dates indeed to the time of William Shakespeare. And there is a little vent or touch hole there. And the theory is that you could say, Dad, 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 give me some powder, give me some powder. And he goes, OK, you be careful. Your mother will murder me if you burn yourself. And you get a few grains of powder and you pop it in there. And while we match, you can go, <laughs> Look at me, I'm Francis Drake. Got you. Now, price tag on this, you're wondering. Antique pistol at £165. Well, thankfully, we're not allowed to entertain the kids like that anymore, but it's still a possible purchase for Paul. Let's see how Margie's getting on, shall we? She's on her way to the town of Middleton in Warwickshire, hoping to get some bargains of her own. Yeah, well, I'd love to find something hidden that would completely translate law. <laughs> but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Well, let's discover what's hidden in Meadow View Antiques. Here to give her a hand is owner Mike. Good morning, yeah. Mike. Oh, Welcome. dear. That... Not that hand, the other one. Yes, we'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, not too serious, I hope. No, it's a, just an operation on me hand. Oh, right. Right, so here, an eclectic mix. <laughs> we specialise in rare items, so you'll, you'll see probably things you haven't seen. Right. Like these little Victorian shoes, perhaps. Are they, what, like an apprentice thing? Yeah, I always think so, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Little shoes like these were often made by Victorian cobblers at the end of their apprenticeship, before they were allowed to start making the adult versions. Let's take a closer look, shall we? Oh, look at those little things. So what sort of money are those? I've got 48 on them. I could do them here for 30. Right. Well, I've only just arrived, so yeah, can yeah, I have a little you thing? Carry on, you carry but, on. Uh, you're moving in the right direction, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Down. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so that's a Margie Maybe. Paul also had a miniature Maybe with his pistol, but what else has he seen? This beautifully crafted Chinese white metal mug has a ticket price of £25. White metal is the term used for unhallmarked silver. This is a South Asian piece. There are numerals scratched on the bottom, jeweler's marks. So someone cared enough back in when, the late 19th or early 20th century, to have that looked at. I think it is what I want it to be. It's a nice piece of Indian, Burmese or Siamese silver. Sweet, isn't it? I like. It's got a word with Phil. How are you doing, Phil? Hello. I have been busy. OK. I'll return to that in a moment. Yes. Um, in one of the cabinets, one of your chaps does military material and some archaeological. Yes. And he's got some antique toy pistols. The pistolets. Yes. Yes. At 165 quid a pop. It's me. It's him. It's you. It's me. Yeah, dark horse, you were keeping that. Um, are you buying them cheap or no? I just fell in love with them, to be honest. I think and they're great. Yeah, they're cool uh, as hell. Yeah. yeah, and I just imagine some child all those 300 yeah. years ago putting a bit of shot or something and shooting the cat. It's fantastic. Definitely. Don't <laughs> yeah. shoot a bit of the cat. Then. No, not for the cat, That'll no. Not be there. Yeah. <laughs> we should assure all our viewers no historical cats were harmed in the making of Phil's imagination. I could go to 120 on one of those. Okay, I don't so know where that leaves it for we're you. We're still at three figures. It's probably too dear at auction. I'd bid 50 quid on them. Ooh. That's yeah, that's what I mean. Um, I could do 70. Could you? Yeah, I'll do a 70 on them. Can we park that? We can. What about that little Chinese possible South Asian white metal mug at £25? The very best on that would be 15 quid. Can I offer you 75 for a pistolet and that? So another tenner off the pistolet? Yes. And the 15 quid for that? Yes. Boom. That's how you do a deal. You're a joy to do business with, my friend. Thank you, Paul. That's Paul in like a shot, with more than half off the ticket price for the pistolet and a good saving on the mug, too. Now, how's Margie getting on? She's got a maybe with the kids' shoes. Anything else? I'll tell you what I do like, but it's a fortune. What's that? That. A the Titanic? No. Oh. The zebra. Oh, the zebra? Yeah. This child's toy has a £125 ticket price. It's probably late Victorian or early Edwardian, and its clever rocking motion is a testament to the toy maker's craft. You could make a baby go to sleep watching that, couldn't you? I like his movement. It's, it's make unbelievable. Baby go to sleep watching it. Look at that. <laughs> I'm getting hypnotised. You're not the only one. Feeling a bit drowsy myself. Well, go on, how much is it then? How well, how much, how much do you want to pay for it? Oh, I'd probably offend you. Yeah? Like 50 quid. What I'll do for you, I'll do you for 75. And while we're here... Yes? What is the very, very best on those little diddy shoes? Oh, sorry, the shoes. I was miles away there. I'll tell you what I'll do. If I did the shoes and, and this... Yeah. ..for under a pound... Yeah. yeah. You've got a good deal. So 90 wouldn't buy the two, as friends. <laughs> 95, 95. Oh, gosh. All right, go on. I'm not going to argue with you for a fiver. No. I was going to shake that poorly hand, but I'll but shake that. You can that. shake one, that, that one instead, <laughs> yeah. I think a big hand for Margie. That was a good bit of negotiating. £60 off the zebra to get it for 75 and more than half price off the shoes to get them for £20. <laughs> Paul, meanwhile, has now made the journey across Warwickshire to the little town of Ulster. He's heading for the most excellently named Classic Cutter. 
I bet his home is a bit like that too. <laughs> Hello there, is it Vicky? Hello. It is, yes. Lovely to see you, I'm Paul. Nice to meet you, Paul. Thank you very much. Pleasantly high street you're parked on. That's lovely. <laughs> With the pleasantries out of the way, it's time to hunt down some antiques. I am no musician, is the truth of the matter. But I feel good about the instrument I have in my hand. A small oboe. This is turned ebony. And these are uh, German silver mounts, a nickel alloy. This lovely little oboe is made by Buffet à Paris, a name which still exists in music shops today as Buffet and Crompon. But Crompon didn't get in on the act until the 1830s, so this must predate that. The reed's missing, but it's replaceable. I like what I see. And of course, vintage instruments are highly collectible to be used and restored. So what's that worth? In any auction, I think that should be worth 40 to 80 pounds. Depending, of course, on who's at the auction. Price, eight. And there are some price tags you just don't haggle over. Vicky, can we just put that to one side? Sorry, that is sold. Lovely, thank you. Thank you. Now haggling, that's rarer on this show than Philip Searle in a good mood. <laughs> What else might be rare in here? It was an elegant object. I suspect this is for the dining table. After dinner, the ladies, of course, have withdrawn to the drawing room and the gentlemen remain with the brandy and cigars. I think this is a cigar lighter. This rather ornate and elegant little setup has a reservoir for oil in the middle, a wick, and two vessels for holding little tapers, called spills, which you used for transferring the flame from the wick to your cigar. And uh, I'm sitting there, yeah. That's your chap, yes. Get my little spill, take a light from the wick, and then there you go. And shoot the cut. I say, what are they going to use from the front hill, chap? It's Darn bad news is not. This is late Victorian, early Edwardian, and made from silver plate. No condition issues, lovely form, a rich object. What's the price tag? £18. Doesn't sound expensive. I think I'd like to buy it. Let's go see what Vicky has to say. Vicky. Paul. Oh. One wee letter plate, I think it's a cigar lighter. It's priced at £18. Any slack in the price of that? Possibly. <laughs> OK, well, uh, I'll be £8 for the instrument. Yep. Uh, that comes to 26 the pair. It does. £20 the pair in the use? I could do 22. Let's do 22. Fabulous. Thank Easy, you very Vicky. much. Fantastic. Great. I better give you some money. That'd be great. So, ticket price for the oboe and £4 off the cigar lighter. Another brisk bit of business from Paul. Meanwhile, Margie is off on a West Midlands magical mystery tour to Coles Hill to investigate the story of a man often seen in places like this with a notebook in his hand. And she's picked up a passenger, Steve Cawthray, to tell her more. This is all a bit of a mystery. Well, and I'm getting more and more excited. This is the Lady Walk Nature Reserve. A 100-acre site that used to be part of the Hams Hall estate, but in 1971, volunteers at the West Midlands Bird Club, like Steve, turned it into the bird watcher's paradise it is today. 214 species of birds have been recorded here. Well, I got my special scarf on for you. Yeah, I, I saw that. That's, that's <laughs> actually a flamingo. Yeah. They say you've actually brought a new species down to the reserve. So make that 215. Lady Walk Reserve is just one of hundreds of bird-watching sites across the UK that thousands of us flock to every week. But all of this arguably wouldn't have been possible without this man, Thomas Buick. Born in 1753, he initially worked as an engraver, but then this keen nature lover made a discovery that revolutionised the world of book illustration and created bird-watching as we know it today. They used to work with wood yeah. and etch your design into the wood mm -hmm. and then print from that design. But the beautiful thing that he did, he, yeah. he found that by using a hard wood such as teak yeah. and cutting across the grain, he could get a finer detail. And hence, once he printed, the detail in the pictures was so much better. 
Burek already had an amazing talent for detailed sketches of birds, and he realised he could turn these into high-quality, detailed illustrations at a low cost. So, in 1797, Buick authored and illustrated his first book, A History of British Birds, and it set the mould for all bird-watching books since. And up in his hide here, Steve has some examples of Buick's eye for detail to show Margie. Hello, Margie. Oh. These are a selection of Thomas's pictures. Yeah, aren't they beautiful? What fine detail. It is, isn't it? This sketch is of a bittern, there are now reckoned to be less than 100 breeding pairs in the UK. One of the few places you can regularly see them is here at Lady Walk Reserve. But this illustration also shows how much of Buick's style has influenced the modern bird guide. It would include the scientific name, mm. which is also done today, and group the birds into species. Right. And you can see that when you compare it to the modern day book. Yeah. There's so a picture of the bittern, similar angle but also pictures of birds in flight, how you'd see them. Even in the 21st century, illustrations are still preferred over photos to show birds' features. Buick's intricate, detailed drawings set the standard, which is still followed today. And in the 19th century, it also changed the public's attitude to birds. This was used not only by natural historians, but mm. it was an affordable book, so a lot of people could you get it and identify the birds. Yeah, birds on the local ponds, birds in the garden. Yeah. It popularised the, the hobby of bird watching. Yeah. And people yeah. wanted to go and see the birds, not yeah. to shoot them, yeah. but to watch them. Yeah. So hence conservation has yeah. come on and evolved because of yeah. the early work that he's done. And Lady Walk is a fine example of the conservation that Buick's work inspired. Time to grab a pair of bins for a spot of twitching, Margie. Right, here we go. Have a look out and yeah. tell me what you see. Oh, there's what a, was that? There's a heron, so it's a grey heron. Yeah. And Thomas Buick's legacy lives on in other ways too. His History of British Birds is the favourite book of Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre, and he inspired the poets Wordsworth and Tennyson to mention him in verse. And very fittingly, both a swan and a wren were named after him. But it's the popularity of bird watching that is his greatest legacy. What are those black ones there? Those are cormorants. Are they? They actually breed on the reserve. <sighs> Steve, I can see how it gets addictive. It is. Really. But unfortunately, I'm off on tea hunting. Got to keep going. You've got a full time job, <laughs> haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Well, that concludes today's action for our dynamic duo of old birds. You said that you fancied a curry net. Curry! You fancy? I'll do whatever you want. Oh, really? Yeah, as long as you haven't bought any militaria. <laughs> Best not mention that pistol and Paul. Enjoy your curry. Nighty night. Rise and shine, or maybe rise and rain, it's time for the final day's buying on this road trip. What a miserable day for our last buying day together. Mind you, it's cosy. It's me and you. Steven up those windows. <laughs> For all the wrong reasons. <laughs> like the car not having air conditioning, eh? Let's remind ourselves what they bought yesterday. Margie has two lots. The vintage rocking zebra toy and the 19th century kids' leather shoes. Oh, look at those little things. Margie has £315.62 for the rest of the day. Paul has four very different lots. The Victorian cigar lighter, the French oboe, the Anglo-Indian cup, and the Elizabethan toy pistol. <laughs> Leaving him with five hundred and one pounds and seventy-four pence to spend today. So you had a full day buying, didn't you? I bought from the sixteenth century to the twentieth. Oh. oh, for goodness' sake! Can you believe it? The British Museum have expressed interest already, but they're having to. If you're not going to be sensible, I'm not going to talk. <laughs> Looks like a quiet journey then. And for Margie, the journey is going to be all the way to the beautiful but damp historic town of Warwick. The castle here dates back to the Norman Conquest. But let's see what our Margie can conquer today. Good luck with the rain, Margie. I hope it's a long walk to your shop. <laughs> I think it's going to stop. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to stop. Uh, see you later, Margie. Okay, I 
have abandoned Margie to the rain and the shops. Is she going to go all chips in? Or be cute? I don't know. Watch the space. We're watching. Margie's first stop is Warwick Antique Centre. I really like those. Really, really cute little, little liqueur glasses there in the box. Really nice, but have you spotted anything? One of the glasses is broken. What a shame. The silver is continental. Could be Dutch or French. You see them quite a lot, but they're, they're really very nice things. These six lovely little Dutch liqueur glasses have a ticket price of £75, but what can Margie get these little babies for? Right, things have caught my eye, George. I can't forget your name. I've got a cat called George. Nice tactic, Margie, comparing him to a much-loved pet. <laughs> he's called Boy George. Well, he's no longer, he's died now. But he's got a headstone in my garden. <laughs> Just by the by. <laughs> uh, well, that's nice, thank you. One of the glasses does need yeah, a replacement. Yeah. It's not the end of the world, but it's just hassle, isn't it? Yes. It's hassle for anybody. Could I buy those for £48? No, I couldn't do £48. <laughs> 55 for the set. 55 And if I do buy them, have you got any silver polish? I can get some for you. Can you? Yeah. So, well, I tell you what, if you'll clean them for me, I'll make a decision now and say yes. OK. <laughs> it's a deal. £55 and some free elbow grease for the glasses set. Now, what else can Margie get some free labour on? Hi, Margie. Hi. We've just had these in from another dealer. I yeah. don't know if you'd like to have a look at these. Bit of, bit Is that your shopping? <laughs> Been out to the shops? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Where are we going, then? Oh, my goodness, what we got here? Oh, silver. Two cents. So this gentleman is selling this sort of as a job lot. As a job lot? Yeah. I'm sure he'd sell individual items. Right, yeah. Luckily, the shop's owner, Colin, can act on behalf of the dealer. So is there any particular bit yeah. there that you like? Yeah. yeah. I think that's saleable. I don't think that's a scrapper, yeah, that's is it? You, yeah. She spotted an Art Deco cigarette case. Not so fashionable nowadays, but it is silver gilt inside. So well, call it 30 quid. Yeah, go handshake on that. <laughs> oh, go on. I'm too Cheers. weary. Cheers. I'm weary. <laughs> That's 30 for the case and 55 for the glasses, making the spend in here £85. Paul, meanwhile, has travelled to Coventry, the UK's motor city. He's come to the city's transport museum to find out about Coventry's pivotal role in the story of another form of transport, the humble bicycle. Here to show him round is curator Megan Nass. Hello, Megan. Yes, Paul. Nice to meet you. Lake White. The first bicycle seen here was the hobby horse, invented in Germany around 1817. But it's this French velocipede or bone shaker from 1868 that kick-started Coventry's cycle industry. Rowley B. Turner, who was one of the cycle pioneers in Coventry, he was living and working in Paris, and he noticed the locals riding around on these machines called velocipedes, and he just thought, that's, that's a great thing. And so he brought one back from Paris to Coventry to his uncle's sewing machine factory. So it was Rowley B. Turner that persuaded his uncle and James Starley to start uh, producing these velocipedes. From Coventry, James Starley and his co-partner, Josiah Turner, made the uncomfortable velocipede practical and sellable. But Starley realised that to increase speed, the front pedals needed to power a larger wheel. So, in 1871, the first penny farthing called the Ariel was made in Coventry. So, Megan, how is this an improvement on the velocipede? We have the addition of wire spokes as opposed to the wooden wooden spokes. We also notice that if 
was probably a little bit more of a smoother ride with the solid rubber tires and then also um, the addition of the braking system on the back there. These look precarious. I imagine it's difficult to mount up. Yes, yeah. Difficult to stop. Mm -hmm. uh, just dangerous all round. Yeah, it, I think it would have been and it would have really, the penny farthing would have really only suited athletic men. Hey. <laughs> we can make this happen. And here is a suited Absolutely. athletic man. My, what is that, a period specimen? Absolutely. This is 1885, and she was made here in Coventry by the oh, Singer Company. fantastic. So she's a fine example. Love so how it. difficult is it to get on one of those? I think the answer is very difficult, Paul, but Simon is going to give you a hand. Go ahead. Tell my kids I love them, yeah. My wife as well. <laughs> There we go. Well, see, see? Assume the position. Yes, 40. absolutely. Very straight back. You look position. as if you were born to ride that, Paul. This is petrified. Seriously, it looks high up from down there. Oh, you're a long way up. up. here. Yeah. Uh, you look like ants, to be yeah, quite absolutely. frank. <laughs> but can Paul get off again? Penny farthings were notorious for toppling while stationary, so most people jumped off them while they were still moving. Rich. And I'm just going to... And then down off the bike. Well done. I felt I was better on the way down very the Very good, very good. <laughs> and this is how we would mount and get... Properly. OK, so... One, two, three... And off into the sunset. Just another day at the museum. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have certainly done the penny farthing. Yes. Mm -hmm. But where do we go from here? We go to this next bike, the Rover Safety Bike, so called because it was safer than the iconic penny farthing. This humble looking bike would sell millions around the world, changing cycling forever and set the blueprint for all modern bicycles all from a factory right here in Coventry. That is a bike as I know it. It is. John Kemp Starley, who is the nephew of James Starley, this was his 1888 version. That seems very modern for 1888. It does. John Starley came up with several new features that are still around today. Same sized wheels, a chain drive, and he added a recent invention, John Dunlop's pneumatic tyre. The journey from the hobby horse to the modern bicycle was complete, and by the mid 20th century, the bike was the most popular form of transport in the world, all thanks to the sewing machine pioneers of Coventry. And it wasn't long before those pioneers that made Coventry the world capital of bike making would also start Britain's car industry. Speaking of which, it's time for Paul to get back on the road. Look at that. I don't think you'll get Margie on the back of that, Paul. With Paul left messing around on the penny farthing, Margie has stolen a march to the joint last shopping destination, beautiful stratford upon avon birthplace of our national bard, William Shakespeare. She's first to Bond's Antiques, where she's going to be helped out by the lovely Richard. Shall we wander together? Let's wander. Absolutely. Let's wander. So, the final shop. What can she snaffle away before Paul gets here? Ooh, what's that? Yeah, it's a, is that a pill holder thing? It looks like a pill holder, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, there we go, what's he said? Cuban cigar mould. <laughs> We're both wrong. This cigar mould, or bonche as it's known, is, as the name suggests, for moulding the cigars into the right shape. This one was made in Berlin. The ticket price is £50. Does he smell? <laughs> yeah, I can. I can. <laughs> or am I just dreaming? <laughs> <laughs> Can you do a bit? I can smell it a bit. I remember. You my can grandpa. a bit, and there's my some grandpa. staining. Look, you can see where they've been sitting. Yeah, yeah. And my grandpa used to smell like that. <laughs> <laughs> I really like it. So, what do you think, price-wise? I mean, smoke-related items. I mean, it's a bit sort of in the past. Mm. Piece of social history, yeah. Social history. Yeah. Decorative object, isn't it, now? Yeah. The cigar mould belongs to a dealer, but Richard has permission to negotiate on his behalf. So, is he open to a little bit of an offer? Well, go on, make us an offer. Well, I was thinking, like, 35 quid. I was going to try and get you to around 40. Well, if he drop a ten under 40, I'll buy it. What's she doing? 38? Yeah. OK. 
Done. Deal. Well, definitely having that. Yeah. Well then, Margie, 12 pounds off the cigar mould. Perfect timing, too, as the Flying Scotsman has just built up outside. Now, what can Paul find in here that could bring a tidy profit at auction? If you are paying any attention, a few auctions ago, you'd have seen me sell one of these for a huge profit. This is a patent uh, hot water jug by W.A.S. Benson. Let's see if you don't know what you're looking at. That's just loosely arts and crafts lidded jug. But if you know to have a look there, there's a mark that says Benson's patent. <laughs> What's the price on that? £34. I think we can be lucky twice. <laughs> I don't know. It's worth asking. I'll bank that one for now. <laughs> what Margie would think. With nothing else catching Margie's eye, she's at a bit of a loose end. Margie, are you are you are you stalking me, Margie? <laughs> Have you got anything to buy? I'm just trying to. Look, and I'm like, if you need a hand, I'm just, just ask. Just trying to find out what you're interested in. See what I put down. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll leave you, honey. Ah, oh, just ignore her, Paul. You'll only encourage her. Now, about that pot. Let's see what Richard can do. It's got 34 pound on it. Is there a wriggle room in this? It's got to be high 20s. Have I? 28, absolute max. 28 quid. Yeah. This is food for thought. All right. Still time to keep looking, Paul, provided you're not distracted, that is. Paul! Uh, Paul. <laughs> Whee! I'm getting good. I am getting better. I'm getting better. Really? <laughs> You've course. forgotten to take your medication today. <laughs> <you? laughs> I'll take you back, excuse me. Right. Oh, wait a minute, I've got it. I'm in a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a... <sighs> <sighs> oh, let's go road tripping with Margie. Right, time for Margie to get off the scooter and Paul to get on his bike. Richard. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> Truth be known, I made a lot of money out of one of these. <laughs> OK. <laughs> a less good example a few auctions ago. Ah. I think I'm going to be lucky twice. Let's hope so. We're committing anyway. Yeah, go for <laughs> £28, right, it's brilliant. done. <laughs> Hooray! That's the last buy of this road trip. Off to auction next, if road trip's odd couple are still talking, that is. <laughs> Get in the car, Margie. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> It won't open. And if they can ever get to auction. It won't Let open. me abandon you here. It won't open. Had enough, Margie. I've had enough of this. <laughs> they were taking this seriously enough, Margie. I'm not so sure we are. <laughs> Time for some shut eye. We're off to Shrewsbury in the county of Shropshire for our final auction. And Hall's Fine Arts is the venue for our last showdown between Paul and Margie. Oh, no, this is it, Margie! I'm out last. What have you bought? Are you stashing. going to do this? Yeah, I am. <laughs> Open sesame. <laughs> that it works. Margie has spent big, with £218 exactly on five auction lots. Whereas parsimonious Paul has only spent £125, also on five lots. But are they worried by each other's purchases? Done it again, I think. Eight pounds. I mean, he can't lose, can he? An old musical instrument with a good maker's name on it. <laughs> There's only one way, and that's up. This worries me. And I think it's going to make eyes at people in the room. And I think this little chap here could gallop away at north of £120. And that would be bad news for me at the final hurdle. We'll see, shall we? Jeremy Lamond is our auctioneer. What does he think might swing or swim in today's sale? Little uh, continental silver mounted cased liqueur glasses, nice presentation case, but one glass is cracked and that's going to hold them back because they're, they're difficult probably to sell on in that condition. I think the riskiest buy might be the Anglo-Indian cup because it is a white metal one and they're not rare particularly, so I think that's a pretty tricky buy. It's a full house and the online bidders are ready to go, so for the last time this trip, let's auction, shall we? It's the last time Hello. we're going to park our backsides next to one another in an auction room, Margie. Hello. I hate goodbyes. I really <gasps> do. Can I say goodbye now? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> 
could this be a goodbye now? Paul's Elizabethan toy pistol. Good luck. Shadows. Thanks, £30. 30 to bid down here immediately. At 30, I'll take five. 35 internet. And that's on. 40. At £40. Pounds. At 40 it is. Five internet. At £45, pounds, it is online. Anybody else? At £45, pounds, I'm selling it online at 45. Who else then? At 45. Last chance. 45. 45. That's all right. Is it? Could you be sure? 46, 20. That's all right, it's close cool enough. I can stand that. That didn't exactly go with a bullet, did it? Oh, Marty, that's very good. You're 20. loving it, aren't you? Well, let's see if the Dutch liqueur glasses give Margie anything to celebrate. At uh, 15, at 15, 15, 15, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30 in the room at 30, 5 internet. Oh, 40 the internet. On the net. 45 internet. 50 internet. Yeah. 5 internet. 60. 60 pounds. The bid's online at 60. You're out at the back. At 60 pounds, I'm going to sell online then. At 60, last chance. 60 pounds. Oh, how can you be disappointed? That's a healthy profit, Marty. I was hoping for a teeny bit more. You need to be more glass half full, Margie. It's a profit. I'll swap your money loss for your profit. <laughs> Next, it's Paul's Anglo-Indian white metal mug. £15. We'll start. Ten, then. Ten pounds only. Ten is bid at the back. At ten pounds now, I'll take fifteen if you like. Fifteen. Twenty. At twenty pounds it is. At twenty pounds. At twenty. Still bid cheap. is in the room now. At twenty pounds. Five if you want. At twenty pounds, it's here. At the back of the room and selling at twenty. Do Small surprise me. Line. Well, his mug isn't running over. But it is still Paul's first profit. <sighs> there is no lot. <laughs> 77. Lot 78. Well, you can at least laugh. Here's Margie's silver cigarette case. I don't know why I bought it. I'm just like, I'm just going to be quiet. Do you know what? You're blaming me, maybe you'll make money on this. 20. 20 is bid online, I'll take five. Yeah, 20 pounds. Immediately, yeah. 20 pounds. <laughs> Who's got five? 20 pounds. Are you all right? I hope you're right. 20 is then. <laughs> Maiden bid of £20, <laughs> all finished at £20. Anybody else in the room at 20 I'll tell you something. You deserve that. <laughs> oh, don't be so hard on yourself, Margie. Where was I? Where was my brain? As you like it. Um, Can you leave it in the little glass beside your bed and forget to... That's my tea. Now it's the Benson jug. 20 Fifteen pounds. He's not making any more, you know. Fifteen. Fifteen I've got on the internet already. Twenty. At twenty pounds. I'll take five. At twenty pounds. At twenty it is. I'm going to sell then at twenty pounds. Quite sure it's twenty. It's not your day, is it? Proof that lightning never strikes in the same place twice. But it makes people realise it's very hard, this game. Hopefully, that's not going to be the case with your miniature shoes, Margie. I'm dying to know what they pitch. £20 for the kid leather shoes. 20 is bid at £20. Bid's online at 25 At £25. At £25 online. At 25 30 in the room. At £30 it is. £30 against you online. At 35 40 At £40 in the room. 5 Internet bid at 45 I'll take 50 anywhere. At £45, all finished at 45 Another profit for Margie. But they were lovely, weren't they? No, they were horrible. <laughs> Let's see if Paul's luck changes with the cigar lighter. And I can start here at £20. At 20, 25, 30. At £30, I've got already. At £30, it is. At 30, at £30. Five just in time, internet. 40 with me. At £40, go again if you like. At £40, selling to a commission bid at £40. £40, <laughs> Well, that's turned your frown upside down, Paul. A tidy profit. This is close to this, though, isn't it? This auction. It's close, but no cigars, just a cigar mould. Ten. Down here, ten pounds. Ten. Fifteen where? At ten pounds for the Cuban cigar mould. Maiden bid, then. One and only bid, in fact. Bound. At ten pounds. I'm bound. There you go. You're pleased, aren't you? I am done. Do you know what? I couldn't be happier. You cad, Paul. Unlucky, Mudgy. Thank goodness it was sold. Next, Paul's French oboe. Would it go for a song? 
Ask me how much I'd like it to make. Go on then. A gazillion. <laughs> Start me at 20 pounds then. 20 to go for the oboe. 20 pounds. Okay. The buffet. 20 is bid, internet bid at 20. Blow it all the way up the Five, if you like, at 20 pounds I've got. At 20. <laughs> this was my big. Anybody yes. else then? Quite sure. 20 pounds, selling at 20. Do we know what we're doing? <laughs> I do sometimes wonder. It's not been a great day for Paul. I would have liked a little bit more. Did I say I would like a little bit more? I would have liked a little bit more. <laughs> it's the final furlong of the road trip. Will the Victorian toy zebra bring a grandstand finish? It's a huge gamble for me. And it's the end. It's our last item. So, here we have £15 bid at 15 At 15 it is. At 15 15 pounds. 15 20 25 30 35 40 Commission bids are out. £40 is bid. At 40 over here, selling then at 40 pounds. Oh, All done at 40 in the room. Any more? Took a gamble. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not good at acting. Oh, Margie. Oh, oh, oh no. no. Well, it was fun while it lasted. Hey, come on, though. What has this trip been like? It's been super. Oh, come on, it's been. Uh, it has. Who's buying the tea? You. Oh. I'd wait to hear how much money you've got first, Paul. Margie began with £410.62, and after sale room costs, she's made a loss of £74.50, meaning she finishes with £336.12. £598.74 was the starting figure for Paul. After all auction costs, he made a loss, too, of £6.10, meaning he ends up with £592.64, making him the winner of this road trip. Congratulations, Paul, and commiserations, Margie. All profits go to children in need. This is Joe. Good. It's over. <laughs> oh, Margie. That's the fat lady song. I, no, I don't want to hear her say. <laughs> because this, I want to keep going, Margie. You're my, my we're best going companion. Home. We're going oh, home. Let's anyway, find the car. Can we have an iced tea? Yeah. Curry? Yeah. What a week it's been. From north to south. So how far's Rotherham from here? If I knew where here was, I'd tell you, Margie. <laughs> There's been a lot of love. See you, darling. See you later. Positive little man, Dick next. <laughs> and a lot of rivalry. Shops. <laughs> I'll race you. Paul scooped the best money makers early in the week. Profit, and that's what I want. Until a tunic turned out to be a turkey. Uh, it's looking good. <laughs> <laughs> but although Margie won that battle, Paul won the week. I mean, is that not tremendous? But they're still great friends. Do you know what? I wouldn't have another compadre over yourself. Well, that's very nice to hear. Until next time, then. Thank you, Margie and Paul. It's been great.